Welcome to Saxon Math Course 3 Star Problems Lesson 98. Now, our first star problem is problem number three. A bag contains two colors of marbles, eight blue marbles and two green marbles. Our first part of this question, part A, says what is the probability of blue and blue if we replace the first marble before drawing the second? Well, the probability of drawing a blue marble at first is eight which is the number of blue marbles, over 10, which is the number of marbles. Now this, are, these are both even. We could divide both of them by two to get four over five. And I'm gonna do that because it will make our math a little bit easier later on. Because to find the probability of getting both blue and blue, we need to multiply the probabilities of each event by the other. So four over five times four over five. Four times four is 16 and 5 times 5 is 25. So we'd have 16 over 25. If we wanted to write this as a percentage, we would need to multiply both the top and the bottom by 4, giving us our answer over 100, which we could then convert into a percent. But it just asked for the probability, so we're going to leave it as a fraction. It then asks, what's the probability of blue and blue without replacement? Well, the probability of the first one is still going to be 8 over 10, which is four-fifths, but the second one, there's one less blue one, because we've already taken one out, so there's seven blue ones, and we've taken out one of the ten marbles, so there's nine marbles left. So we'd have four over five times seven over nine. Seven times four is twenty-eight, and five times nine is forty-five. All right, so those were our two probabilities. Now, Moving on to our next starred problems. I'm going to be doing both of these at the same time. Question number four and question number five. The question is the same. Is it a function? Is it linear? Question four. Let's do the vertical line test. All right. So far, we're looking good. Yep. Still passing. Haven't crossed any points where there's two points yet. All right. And it passed the vertical line test, which means it is a function. Now, the tough part. Is it linear? It is. It's a straight line. It is linear. Now what about this one? Moving along, is it a function? Let's go. So far I've only touched one point on the line, only one point on the line, only one point on the line, only one point on the line, and it passes the vertical line test. Yes, it is a function. Is it linear? Well, can I make it with a straight line? No. I, I can do part of it, maybe. Maybe the other part. But I can never draw this whole thing with just a straight edge. It wouldn't work. So, no. It's not linear. Moving on to our next star problem, question number nine. <clears throat> question number nine gave us a picture of a triangular prism and asked for the lateral surface area. Remember the lateral surface area is the perimeter of the base times the height. Now the base sides were 10, 10, and 14.1 so the perimeter of the base is 10 plus 10, 20 plus 14.1 which is 34.1. We're going to then multiply by the height given to us in the problem which is 20 and 20 times 34.1 is 68 point, or sorry 682. Now, question 10 says use words to describe x is less than 4 or x is greater than or equal to 6. And it's x is less than 4 or greater than or equal to 6. So x is less than 4. It doesn't have the little line, so it's going to be an open dot on 4. It's less than, so it's moving to the left. x is greater than or equal to 6, does have the little line that it has equal to, so it will be a closed dot on 6, 
and greater than goes to the right. Remember, they both have that R sound. That's going that way. Now, in order to graph both of them, all we do is we take the graph of the first one, the graph of the second one, and since they're going in opposite directions and we have an OR function, we put everything on the graph. Remember, it's similar to the union. If it's in one graph or the other, it goes in the final one. OR is similar to union and is similar to intersect. So we're going to have our open dot on the left, our closed dot on the right, and our two lines which are going through. And there we go. That's question 10. Question 11 says solve the system by graphing. Now, starting off here, our first equation is 4x plus 2y equals 8. Now, if we plug in 0 for x, we'd get 4 times 0, which is just 0, plus 2y equals 8. So 2y equals 8, so we're dividing both sides by 2. 2y divided by 2 is y, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So when x is 0, y is 4. When y is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, so 4x equals 8. If we divide both sides by 4, 4x divided by 4 is x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we're going to have the point 0, 4, and 2, 0, and then we're going to graph that. This is our first line. Now, for our second graph, we're going to take y equals x plus 1, and we're just going to plug in 0, 1, and 2. Now, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So that means we're going to have the point 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. And we're going to graph that on our same graph. And we can see here what our final answer is going to be. Our final answer will be that point that's on both lines, 1, comma 2. All right, that was question 11. Now, our last starred problem is question 13. Question 13 says the ratio of corresponding sides of similar triangles is 5 to 3. What is the ratio of the areas? Now, before I've told you that the ratio of areas is equal to the scale factor squared. But the scale factor is found using the ratio of sides. So the ratio of the areas is the ratio of the sides squared. So if the sides ratio is 5 to 3, the areas is 5 squared, or 25, to 3 squared, which is 9. Now that's our last star problem. Stay safe, wash your hands, and do the rest of your homework.